Hello and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. In the past, we've looked at lots of different ways of twisting iron bars. We've done round bar, we've done square bar, we've done composites of different types of bar all twisted up. We've even looked at angle iron and basket twists, but we haven't tried twisting any tubing. So today I've cut three pieces of square tubing. This just happens to be one inch square tubing, 25 mil square tubing, eighth inch wall. It's pretty stout tubing. And I'm just gonna try and twist this. I'm gonna try and do three different approaches. They're all gonna be just a plain straight twist. I'm not gonna do anything fancy to it. But there's something that happens to square bar when you twist it that we need to look at first. Then we'll go on and see if we can find a way to deal with that side effect and see how that works out twisting square bar. So the first thing we need to do is go get a bar hot and twist it to see just what I'm talking about. Because it's easy to crush the ends of the square tubing, I want to quench just the ends. So when I clamp it in the vise and grab it with a twisting wrench, I'm less likely to deform the ends because that can cause real problems when you're trying to twist this. Now when quenching tubing, make sure you don't point it at your face. Sometimes steam shoots out the end and that can be a real problem. This is just a piece of tubing with nothing special done to it other than quenching the ends to support the, the twist. And you can already see what's happening here. Some of that is collapsing on itself because it just can't support the thin walls of the tubing. Now with some controlled heat, you might be able to control that effect and you might decide you like that, but generally it's why people don't twist square tubing. So really this is just what I expect to happen when twisting tubing. And if you heated this back up and kept going, that's not a bad effect, that little rope twist, but it's so much skinnier than the tube, I'm not sure it's what you would want if you were using this for a, a railing or a baluster or something like that. So let's do a second one. And I'm gonna start this exactly the same. I'm gonna heat it up, I'm gonna quench the ends, but I'm going to insert a piece of three quarter inch round bar just before I do the twist. I've got a short piece of bar, and I'm going to push it down into the middle there. And hopefully that supports that. So it's getting cold awfully fast, so it's going to be hard to twist. Okay, you can see here it's starting to collapse because my bar is beyond that point. So I needed a longer bar, but let's heat this back up. Now remember, these are just test pieces, so they don't have to come out perfect. We're just testing an idea. Need to be a lot tougher than I am to twist some of this, but this one comes out pretty good. Except where I didn't get the bar to extend far enough. So why use a short section of round bar instead of just filling the tube up? There's a certain assumption that the reason you're using tubing is to save weight. If you fill the tubing with solid bar, why not just use solid bar to start with? So adding just a section of bar where the twist is going to be just supports the twist. But doing a test piece like this kind of gives you an idea that the bar's got to stick out just a little bit further. In general, though, I like that twist. It still has collapsed in on itself right through here, but it can only go so far. And I think that's a pretty, pretty darn good look myself. So let's go on to bar number three. This one I want to fill completely, but not with steel. I'm going to weld a cap on one end, fill it with sand, and then weld a cap on the other end. 
Now when you weld a plate on something like this that you're going to heat, leave an air gap, leave a vent hole. In this case I only weld a little bit on both sides and I leave two sides completely empty. There's probably a better way to fill this, but this way you get to watch me throw sand all over the shop. But this is good, the air inside and any moisture in the sand is going to expand, it's going to need to get out. And you don't want to be building a pipe bomb. You want to be filling your tube with sand. So that's very important. People that do canister Damascus, that's an important thing to remember there as well. And you want this fairly compacted. Got way too much sand here. And that should do it. And as a final safety precaution, I would just not stand in front of the forge while you're heating this in case one of those caps does blow off. Stand off to the side and reach in with the tongs from the side. Once it's up to heat, if the cap hasn't blown off, it probably isn't going to. But there is a risk with this, so be very aware of that. Yeah, we got good and lucky. We didn't blow ourselves up trying this. Not that I thought we would, or I wouldn't have done it. So this is still full of sand, and the sand then might support the tubing. It also holds a lot of heat, so this one's staying hot longer. I'm going to go an extra twist, I think. So this one came out much cleaner and more even. Again, having an even heat as with any twist matters. These are just test pieces. So as this twists faster, heat this area up with a torch or cool that area off with a little bit of water. As tough as this is to twist, I'd go with the get it hotter method. But this one is very good. It still collapses in a little bit, but not as much as the other one did. And certainly not as much as the unsupported twist did. So now these plugs are just temporary. It's definitely work to get the sand back out. Now why in the world do you even need to bother going through all that trouble to get the sand back out? Well for one thing, just like using the shorter solid bar, this is going to be a lot lighter with all the sand out of it. But for another, it is now hollow. And if for some reason you need to run electrical wiring through this, if the building inspector says it's okay, you now have a conduit for electrical wiring. So if your stair rail is going to have a little light at the end of it or something like that, or if this is part of a floor lamp or some other element that needs electrical wiring, this works great and that's a good reason to use tube in the first place. That's just a quick look at twisting square tubing and some of the issues you might run into and some of the ways you might be able to deal with those issues. What you choose to do with this information is entirely up to you. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, We'll see you for the next one.